Welcome back to the uh, EV conversion of the 1968 Toyota Stout. We're here at the Fryers Forest Research and Development Workshop. Day 10, Sunday, let's not screw around anymore. I want to put the gearbox in now. That's a test fit. It doesn't fit. Nah, just kidding. Ah, it's beautiful. Now we've got to fab up the rails that come forward to these front engine mounts. Okay, I want to give you guys a little update. And so I started thinking about where the batteries are going to go. We're going to get up and running with the flex modules in the slip-on. going to leave the engine bay free. Moving away from all that mechanical stuff we've been doing. I've just nicked over to the containers and grabbed all the uh, electrical cabling and this old inverter that's buggered. And yeah, I'm sure we could fix it, but what's a 1.5 kilowatt inverter? I mean, there's so many these days. More cables and just donor stuff. If we don't use it for this, what are we keeping it for? Now it feels like we're a bit more on an EV project. So we've got a few bits and pieces here. You saw these over at Sam's the other day. Little 48 volt contactors, little breaker switch that we... I, I got to put this in the dash, really, so it's accessible by the user easily. Uh, and that kind of means I need to put the power cables through the dash, which kind of makes me feel like I should just put this inside the dash, because if I've got to go in and out, I want to see what this can be a bit of a donor box for us to put our motor controller and maybe BMV shunt and a few other things in. Um, yes, this is the motor controller. It's tiny, we need to put a heat sink on it. They're the FETs on the back there. I do want to get the big brother of this if this turns out to be reasonable in its features. I mean, I've looked at the manual and it looks pretty good. The devil will be in the detail putting it in. And are we really going to get this all done by Thursday? <laughs> Yeah, it's only 100 amp, 100 volt, 100 amp continuous, 100 volt, 200 amp peak controller. So it's a bit on the small side. We'll, we'll order the big brother if we're happy with it. Our batteries can only do 140 amp continuous anyway. So yeah, we'll move around. We just might not go up as steeper hills yet. Um, pot box for accelerator. That's got to plug into the motor controller. And yeah, anyway, start. I, I want to see with this, uh, this old inverter, which could be fixed. So many of these old things lying around. This one's this one's died, and see so that we can use it as a as a box for our motor controller and shunt, and maybe we could put the VMV on the outside, and could be really nice. Let's give it a go. Let's open it up and see. Be careful, like you know, charged capacitors and high voltage. Be careful. Well, I guess we can see what happened. Holy moly, that was, uh, that was exciting. The board's burnt out, but what I want is the heat sink in the box. It's really great. We might just be able to put our motor controller slap straight onto that. That is a serious bit of wet. And this box looks good. I'm uh, pleased with that. We've got a nice big heat sink. Can put our motor controller in it. 
Yeah, it's even got lugs to mount things. Very cool. I'm just inside the cab here, having a look at where we might mount some of this gear. Let's get this, uh, get this cleaned out and see whether the box will fit. So there appears to be half the farm in the bottom of this seat. Let's get all that out. It's going to get dusty. And here was you thinking that this was a video about EV conversion, but really it's just about car cleaning. Bloody clickbait, right? I painted all this. I scrubbed all the rust back, phosphoric it all, and painted it all four years ago. So this is all just, I guess it's cow feed. There's no rust in here. The floor's still good, but oh my god, it's caked on. Yeah, so uh, that's quite a lot of crap that's just come out of there. Now, that's not me blowing the seat apart with the compressed air. There's a rat hole down in there. A rat had made a nest in the bottom of the seat. Boy, oh boy, I think we might be uh, in need of a new seat. At least we got most of the crap out of down here and we can start thinking about mounting our uh, hot box. Oh, another beautiful morning. I've picked up a few more parts uh, on my way home last night. I dropped by Sam's place again. Sam's got uh, many good things in the shed there. He had a bit of a supply of uh, supply of old cables of different sizes. So yeah, much much appreciated, Sam, for all the all the little bits and bobs to uh, get the project happening. Could, certainly couldn't do it without you. Much appreciated, mate. I'm kind of tempted to finish off the front brakes first because that'd wrap up the brake system. I reckon that's what I'm gonna crack into this morning. We're gonna pull those front wheels off, uh, get the pistons out of the wheels and the backing plates, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna give them a little service, give them a little uh, clean up on the inside, a little home, and maybe some new seals in them. Let's get these brakes done, I reckon. Let's get into it. plates and the, the pistons are off so we're gonna they're, they're, the backing plates are actually different than the ones we've got that are resprayed so not gonna use those resprayed ones of Ollie's they're from a later stout let's knock this over quickly cuz I want to get into the electrical wiring I'm just putting this phosphoric acid on. Actually, I'd love to know if any of you guys are chemists, uh, what the optimum way to apply this uh, is. My understanding is that it protects from further rust to some degree. But we're gonna let these sit for a little bit to continue converting. We're gonna put some fish oil on them soon and I'm just gonna put the rubbers back in. So. Then we can start bolting all these uh, 
reconditioned cylinders back on. We've uh, anti-seized the adjusters and this is a blind cylinder here. That's why it doesn't have a boot. Uh, it's not actually it's not actually doing anything this one. As I said on the back of the vehicle they're double acting and on the front they're single acting. Uh, which means there's just a piston pushing in this direction. This is just an adjuster. No fluid in there. Which uh, does mean, because this is a, a ute, that it's got most of its braking on the back of the vehicle, unlike a passenger car that has most of it on the front. So, uh, yeah, unless it's got a load on it, it's really easy to lock the back wheels up. Fortunately, we that's not too much of an issue, and we have a load on it most of the time. So, it's uh, well balanced. You can see um, just putting the banjo bolts back on. Pretty cheap little thing to get yourself a kit of a different uh, copper crush washers. And you know, get yourself some of these kits. Like, repair stuff, but have on hand some, some kits so that you can repair stuff. These are not expensive, there's not a lot of resources used to make them, because it's a small amount of stuff. And a few of those kits of different sorts of things, O-rings, circlips, copper crush washers, uh, split pins, you know, there's little things like that that you don't need a lot of them and uh, go a long way. So, very handy. Get yourself some of those, I reckon. Just gave these uh, wheel bearings a wash up in some petrol because the grease on them was so caked on and old uh, that yeah I wasn't confident new grease was going to go in very well. So anyway, they they cleaned up. They actually feel okay. So yeah, we're gonna gonna pop these back in and get the bearing tension done up. Uh, just a quick note, I was just greasing the kingpins quickly and wasn't going to bore you with it, but uh, yeah, really easy to see the top grease nipple, the zerk, there, but don't forget you've got a second one down the bottom. And given how hard kingpins are to, to get these days, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be looking after the kingpins, so don't forget to grease the top and bottom zerks. Now I uh, showed you this uh, earlier on in one of the earlier episodes. This is the tie rod. It links the two front wheels together so that the steering that moves one of the wheels also moves the other one. And I mentioned it was bent from running into something up at the farm. So I'm going to do something a little disgusting, a little agricultural. I'm going to straighten it. What do we reckon? Near enough's good enough? That's a bit better. Just a farm ute, right? What's a little extra toe in or toe out? <laughs> I mean, we can adjust the ends, but uh, yeah, that's heaps better. Apologies to those uh, Toyota fans that found that a bit brutal. Me just bending the tie rod back by jumping on it. Ah, gotta get the job done. God, we've only got a, only got a day left. What are we gonna do? Ah, I gotta get moving. <laughs> anyway, let's get this uh, brake on. It's a, it's only taken all day to do the front brakes. Yes. So I've just discovered this wheel bearings uh, cactus. The other ones were okay, but I've got some spare ones here that have got a tiny bit of rust, surface rust. Probably wouldn't put them in the 
road goer, so might as well throw them in. I'm here inside the cab of the 1968 Toyota Stout that we're converting to electric for seller dairy. I'm starting to have a think about where I'm going to mount this accelerator pedal. I've referred to it before as a pot box. Yeah, that's a potentiometer housed up with a, a pedal and a spring. Anyway, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, pulling out this accelerator that's in here and uh, yeah, making a bit of room for, for the, uh, the new electronic accelerator. Got the accelerator out and I'm thinking we might take a bunch of this dash out because there's some rust in behind here that's not looking real nice. And I might just uh, take the opportunity to spray some fish oil and stuff in there. And also for mounting our motor controller and everything, I think it'll be nice to have a bit easier access to under here where we, I think, gonna bolt it to. So uh, yeah, gonna pull the dash off. Well, I've got the dash out, but it uh, doesn't look real good. Uh, this is the Achilles heel of the stout. In the back of the firewall here, water gets into it, and uh, yeah. That rust is pretty horrible. There's a whole lot of bog in there disguising more. Down there in the bottom of the floor, all mud comes up through that hole. We probably should weld something over that. Five years ago, when uh, I had it in the workshop, the accelerator basically fell out of the floor, and down here, uh, this is a big thick plate. Uh, you can see the edge of it here that I made up because the, the bottom of the floor was half missing. So it's definitely the body in these things that's what goes. The rest of it's pretty tough, but uh, yeah, it kind of makes me think we should be doing a little bit of rust proofing on that because. It's going to get structural at some point. It's going to get to the point where the cab starts falling apart, but uh, I think we can stop it. Well, there's all sorts of things down in there. There's an aeroplane, and there's remnants of an old broken window, and there's buttons, and, and countless dead small animals. Feels like cancer, stout cancer. I don't want to do too much because I gotta get this rolling tomorrow. Haha. <laughs> hmm. The Achilles heel of the stout. <laughs> 